Hello my scholars, you welcome to my school YouTube channel. My name is Emmanuel and in today's video we'll be treating topic by topic video lessons in chemistry. Please don't go anywhere, stick around and we'll be right back. Welcome back to my school YouTube channel. In today's video, we'll be talking about environmental pollution. Environmental pollution. Now, let's get down to the next slide. The learning objectives we'll be looking at by the end of this class, you should be able to define what environmental pollution is. You should also be able to define different terminologies that we have in there. We have pollutants, we have sink and so on and so forth. We'll be looking at them. Also, you should be able to state and explain the types of environmental pollutions that we have. We have the air pollution, we have water pollution, we have soil or land pollution. You should be able to state them and explain them. Then, we'll also be looking at the causes of the different types of pollution. We'll be looking at the causes of air pollution, causes of water pollution, causes of land or soil pollution and then we'll also be looking at the effects of those types of pollution and then we'll be looking at the way the measures to put in place in order to be able to control those different types of pollution that we have and finally we'll be considering the causes of greenhouse effects as well as global warming now let's move on to the next slide environmental pollution is said to be the contamination of air water and soil with harmful substances. When we say harmful substances, we're talking about pollutants. That's another word that harmful substances are called, okay? From human activities, upsetting the environment balance. Now, this is an all-encompassing definition. You could be asked to define what air pollution is, okay? If you are stating what air pollution is, then you will just say that environment, uh, air pollution is the contamination of air okay with harmful substances from human activities upsetting so you don't need to repeat of air of water and soil okay so this is all encompassing definition so in other words we are saying that environmental pollution is the contamination of air contamination of water contamination of soil with harmful substances okay from human activities most of those substances that pollute the environment whether the air the water are resulting from activities of human someone has taken uh, a drink now and then the, uh, the the pet bottle it just flings it somewhere someone has bought something that was done with paper just you know trash it somewhere so all of those activities all of those harmful you know substances in the environment are actually as a result of human activities and what do they do they upset the balance of the environment upsetting the environment balance pollution is a phenomenon that occurs when a pollutant is introduced into the environment that is when we say there is pollution let's move on to the next slide if a pollutant is introduced into air it causes air pollution if it is introduced into the water it causes water pollution and if it is introduced into the soil or the land we say it causes soil pollution so this has been able to what to separate and tell us the different types of environmental pollution that we have let's move on to the next slide now now when we talk about the environment okay at large we talk about the biosphere okay biosphere has to do with of course as the name implied bio bio means life so where we have living organisms okay in that particular region living in that region okay we say biosphere is the regions of the surface and atmosphere of the earth or another planet that is occupied by living organisms anywhere you can find living organisms that is a biosphere you can find living organisms in the water you can find living organism in air okay like the microorganisms you can have some organisms that are living in air and then you can also find living organisms on land okay so anywhere living organisms can survive 
can live, can breathe, can habit, habitate. Okay, we say that place that is called biosphere. So biosphere is the region of the surface of the earth and atmosphere of the earth or another planet that is occupied by living organism. The biosphere is the region of the earth that supports life and it includes living organisms and the abiotic components. When we talk about abiotic components in your biology, you will learn that there are non-living components. Non-living components you have such like that influence or that affect the, the living organisms where they live in. We talk about temperature, okay? We talk about air and so on. We talk about rainfall and so on and so forth. So we said that the biosphere is the region of the earth that supports life and it includes living organisms and the abiotic components of the lithosphere. When we talk about the lithosphere, we're talking about the land, okay? Lithosphere, that's the earth's crust, the hydrosphere and the lower layers of the atmosphere, particularly the troposphere. In a nutshell, we are saying that the biosphere is divided into three. The areas where living organisms can be found, where they live, where they can thrive, okay? Uh, one, we talk about the land. Land has to do with lithosphere, okay? That's another name where you can call the land. On land, you can find living organisms there. In air, we call that atmosphere, okay? That's the region of the biosphere where living organisms can live in the atmosphere in air and then the last one is hydrosphere hydro has to do with water okay that is the third part of what biosphere that we have where you can have living organism existing there let's move on to the next slide now the atmosphere is vital to the biosphere why because it provides essential gases like oxygen for respiration you and i know how much important oxygen is for us to survive for us to carry out for human or for even other organisms to carry out their metabolic activities. You talk about respiration, talk about uh, circulation, talk about excretion, talk about, you know, all the metabolic activities that are, that can take part or that can take place in humans, okay? We actually require what? Oxygen. Oxygen is responsible and is very important. Protecting life from harmful solar radiation and plays a key role in water and carbon cycles that are necessary for life to thrive. So that is what the atmosphere does. So let's move on to the next slide now. This is just a diagram that shows the different biosphere, okay? Part of the biosphere. The biosphere we say is divided into lithosphere, the land is divided into hydrosphere, that's the water part where living organisms live in, and then we have the atmosphere in the air where the organisms can live. So you can see though it's not very clear we have this is the atmosphere that's the region okay you can see the birds that are there there are microorganisms that we might not be able to see okay and then we have the hydrosphere this is inside of the water okay you have the water you have the fishes you have the octopus you have the animal you have the plants inside of that okay so all of these ones and then we have in the what and the on the land you can see these are worms we have worms there we have trees growing there we have grasses and so on we have them just moving on that way so all of this, the hydrosphere, the atmosphere, the lithosphere, they all make up the biosphere, okay? So let's move on to the next slide now. We've defined what biosphere is. That's one of the terminology. Another terminology that's important that we need to talk about is pollutants. Pollutants are harmful substances, okay? Or a substance that causes harm to the environment is referred to as pollutant. Contaminant is another terminology. Contaminant has to do with a substance, is a substance that is not naturally present, but it is introduced by humans that alters the environment. Naturally, they are not there, but human activities brought them in. Then they cause an imbalance, okay, in the environment. They alter the, what the environment from being. So such substances are referred to as contaminants. So you should be able to differentiate between pollutant and contaminant. Source. Source is the place where a pollutant originates from okay and then we have the sink the sink is a medium that absorbs or interacts with a pollutant these are some of the terminologies that we'll be talking about from time to time now let's move on to the next slide there are different types of pollution we have talked about them before okay so for emphasis sake we are going to now delve into them gradually we have the first which is air pollution the second is water pollution and the third is soil or what we call land pollution. Now let's move on to 
the first one, air pollution now. The primary pollutants of the air pollution are released directly from a source. That's why we say we have primary pollutants. In other words, what we are saying is that we are categorizing the pollution or pollutant into three. Okay? Or majorly, let's say into two. We have the primary pollutants and the secondary pollutant. The primary pollutants are released directly from a source. For instance, where we have smoke, a bonfire is made and then you have the wood that is bringing up smoke. Okay, that is a primary because it is coming directly from that source. It affects the environment, the atmosphere, and then it causes imbalance in that atmosphere. So dust can also come directly. We have SO2, sulfur four oxide, okay, or sulfur dioxide. We have CO, carbon monoxide. This is a poisonous gas. Also, and then we have NOx. The NOx, the X is meaning that we could have one there. We could have two there, okay? So if it's NO, one that is no we could also have no uh, two okay as the case may be so that's why we have the x here okay so the sources of primary pollutants so you need to know the different types of primary pollutants we have smoke is one of them dust is another one so2 co and no1 or no or no2 so these are examples of primary pollutants secondary pollutants are not directly from a source but those ones are formed when primary pollutants react with atmospheric components such as SO3 and ozone. Of course, ozone, we know that's our O3, okay? When SO2, for instance, which is a primary, reacts with another atom of oxygen, we can have SO3. So these are examples of secondary pollutants. They are not just directly from a source, but it is emanating from a primary source, okay? Which is SO2, reacting with one atom of oxygen SO2 plus O, we have SO3, okay? Or we can have SO2 plus half O2, okay? And then we have SO3, and then we have the ozone. Two moles of ozone, like O2 oxygen, they're reacting, uh, of oxygen, reacting with one mole of oxygen, we have ozone. So, we talk about the greenhouse effect. The greenhouse effect usually is caused by gases like carbon four oxide, which is carbon dioxide, methane and N2O, trapping it and leading to what we call global warming, okay? That is the usually the cause of greenhouse effect. There are greenhouse gases, okay? Greenhouse gases that cause that what they do is that they will just trap it. And when they trap it, that will not lead to what a global warming. When we talk about the greenhouse gases, we are talking about CO2, methane, and n to oh, that's nitrous oxide. Then we also have the acid rain, um, NOx and SO2, the example of this. So we can have NO2. When NO2 combines with water in the atmosphere or the droplet, okay, water droplet, water vapor in the atmosphere to form nitric acid, okay, and sulfuric acid, respectively. So if this reacts with water, okay, in the atmosphere, we form nitric acid. If SO2 combines with uh, sulfuric acid, that's H2SO4, we are going to have what? We are going to, what? We combines with uh, water. SO2 combines with water, we are going to form sulfuric acid. So, which now fall to the earth, damaging the structures and ecosystem. So, that is usually the cause of acid rain. Now, in a nutshell, we are saying that air pollution has to do with, you know, contamination or contaminating the environment, contaminating the air because it is air. Okay, use the definition we gave for environmental pollution before, but you are not going to involve water, you are not going to involve land there because it is air. So it's just by, it is just talking about air that is brought about by human activities to upset the environment. Let's move on to the next slide now. The ozone layer depletion is one of the effects we can have also. We're talking about the air pollution. The release of chlorofluorocarbons, we call that CFC, chlorofluorocarbons, alons, and hydrochlorocarbons hydrochlorocarbon, in the atmosphere is the major cause of depletion of the ozone layer. When we talk about ozone layer, the layer that is there shielding and protecting us from effects of the radiation from the sun, okay, it, it tends to reduce the, what, the effect okay, of that. So when the depletion, the, the ozone layer begins to deplete, these are the things that can cause them. The chlorofluorocarbon, 
can cause the depletion of the ozone layer. Allons can cause the depletion of the layer. Hydrofluorocarbon can cause the depletion of the ozone layer in the atmosphere, okay, once they interact with it. So the depletion, the depleting ozone layer does not prevent the harmful ultraviolet rays coming from the sun. It does not prevent it. And then it now causes skin diseases. It can, and then the eye problems among individuals. If the ultraviolet rays, the ozone layer, if it's able to shield and protect uh, us from the ultraviolet rays, the UV rays, okay, that is coming from the sun, there cannot be any depletion. But once all of these gases now begin to what they are released now into the atmosphere, they begin to attack the ozone layer. Once they attack the ozone layer, the ozone layer becomes depleted. Once that is depleting, then the ozone layer cannot efficiently anymore, be, cannot prevent the ultraviolet rays, the UV rays that is coming from the sun, it cannot prevent it from coming to us. And then that will now cause skin disease and the eye problems among individuals now we have come to the end of the preview of this video lessons if you want to have access to the full video please feel free to click on the link in the description below that takes you to the my school website there you'll be able to have access to the full video and in that full video we are going to be talking more about the effect of air pollution we are going to be talking about the control of air pollution we'll be talking about water pollution land pollution and the likes i believe you enjoyed this content if yes please don't forget to click on the like button hit the subscribe button and finally tap on the notification bell to keep you informed once we upload our next video